Yeah, hi, my name's uh, Richard Castellai. Uh, I'm the founder of Hackfest.tv, and uh, Hackfest has been a journey for me of about three years. Um, I started publishing at Market.tv three years ago uh, with the idea of looking into and examining the media convergence. So basically TV apps, connected TV, smart TV, social TV, multi-platform engagement and transmedia and how this whole new ecosystem is evolving. One thing led to another, uh, another. I never expected to be in the events business, but um, I kept coming across all these APIs and SDKs and I'm like, wow, these are fantastic. Developers need to have more of this stuff and I was writing a lot about it. And thus the idea for TV Hackfest was born. And we did the first show last year in 2013, uh, 2012 in London, along with Transmedia Fest, which was great because we had a lot of creatives and writers and stuff there. And this year we've come to San Francisco and we're going to be back in London again after, after the summer. So it's, it's really a, it was kind of an organic growth of an idea that just came together. My main mission is to bring together creative writers, people from the creative community, um, directors and, produ and, and producers into the world of technology and vice versa so they can understand each other more so it's a, it's a two-way street I also see TV as, a, as, a, as an industry that's ripe for disruption music <laughs> uh, print uh, I used to be a journalist I woke up one morning 200 million bloggers I went to the music industry we know what happened there I looked at TV and I went hmm you know what <laughs> I'm gonna keep my eye out there so I started writing about social TV three years ago four years ago now which was very early the concept of, of you know th these worlds meeting on the television space um, so that's basically um, the story behind it and we really hope to take the hack first brand uh, or the Hackfest uh, experience into um, other other cities next year as well, this year and next year. Cool. All right. Um, so what are you hoping to see from the contestants today? What's, what's the... I would like to see some great examples of context. For me, you know, people talk about second screen and where does it become useful and I don't engage with TV and, you know, I only email and that's true. The statistics prove Nielsen, you know, numbers show that people aren't engaging with TV on their second screen, even though 88% of tablet owners, you know, use their device while watching TV once a month and they have these phenomenal numbers and things. Clearly they aren't engaging with TV. Um, I think there needs to be some exploration of how to make that marriage work. Uh, in terms of companion experiences. And I think one of the things that works really well is game shows, um, like the Million Pound Drop in the UK with 100,000 people playing in real time. But I also think context is important. So, you know, how many times have you ever got up from your TV, gone somewhere, you know, looked, uh, gone online, sorry, not gone somewhere, gone online, looked up IMDb, you know, gone to Wikimedia, Wikipedia, find out more information. I want that information to be pushed. I don't want to have to pull it. And I want that information to be pushed to me in an intelligent, timely manner. So I think ideas around context are great. So TMS is here. They've got the data. We've got some great tools around um, recognition technology. So let's see some mix and mash, and we'll see what comes out of it. I've been writing for Roots Wiki for a very brief period of time now, but I'm happy to be with them kind of been uh, riding around the Android community for a couple of years now, so it's good to see that going further. And uh, I took an interest in Google TV. Um, though I'm not a developer myself um, yet, anyway, I'm at the very cusp of beginning that process. Um, I have always been in my writing career thus far, it's always been involved with websites that were specifically geared toward Android development and Android developers. Um, so at Roots Wiki, our readership is a great deal of them are developers themselves um, with apps in the market um, or on the Roots Wiki forum. So that's kind of what our articles there are geared toward. So it's kind of the perfect opportunity for me to kind of give some feedback on my own user experience with Google TV since I began using it and uh, advocate for more development. Um, Google TV is uh, probably my favorite Android device that I own. I own several Android devices uh, and I use Google TV every single day. Um, and I have since uh, the summer of 2011. So uh, I got a lot of experience using it, yeah. Uh, first of all, I replaced, just just to go over how I use Google TV, from TV myself, um, I replaced my, home, my regular standard stock launcher with Open Launcher uh, by Entertalian. Uh, I also use uh, Netflix a whole lot, uh, 
News Republic, YouTube, Chrome, Evernote, Dropbox, Serenity, Plex, Snag, Control, E-File Explorer, Google TV, Remote, Able Remote, um, Chrome Mote for the Chrome browser extension, uh, various web apps, you name it. Probably share a lot of YouTube videos across um, from my various other devices. That's probably my favorite feature, the ability to share content. If I'm looking at something, it's very easy for me to then transfer that to my Sony Google TV and show other people that are in the room or, uh, or have it in a larger format. So, um, so basically, from that standpoint, I'm very interested in seeing Google TV development grow. Uh, I'm actually a PC developer, a web developer, um, web designer. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience moving into Android development. I'm just, uh, how should I say, I've, I've, I've done a lot, very, lot of interviews with Android developers over the years. I'm very connected in the Android development community, I guess. I can say that. So I kind of use that as a segue as maybe getting some of those guys um, to bring some of their stuff into a Google TV format, you know. Yeah, Carmen D'Alessio, the author of that book, who I've uh, had the pleasure of speaking with a few times, and I originally wrote an article because I also volunteer for another uh, website, Google TV Friends. You may have heard of Google TV Friends as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so over there, I write a few articles over there. So um, I got in touch with Carmen first over there, and I, I thought that maybe if I did something a little more in-depth, a little more hands-on, um, and kind of even some of that some of that stuff I'm looking at myself like I said as I'm trying to get into development for Google TV specifically um, So I thought that it was good to share that with other people um, Especially developers who are already established and out there and maybe you know get some attention Towards some of the features and things I would like to see added to Google TV So what, um, and what these are those things, features most be? of these things are things that I think the development community not Google specifically um, are, are better positioned to bring us um, in the way that I'd like to see it, I guess, would be the best way to say it. Uh, we're kind of, in the community, we would love to see like uh, some, Google, some better Google support, a dedicated Gmail app, um, Google Docs, uh, more launchers. Some of the existing launchers on the small Android screen are fabulous. Um, we would like to see. I would like to see some of that innovation uh, brought to the big screen. As a matter of fact, I'm working on an article right now that's really basically finished. It's probably published soon um, about Google TV launchers specifically and how we would like to see some of the creative ideas that have been brought to the Android small screen in terms of launchers um, and how much better the performance uh, some developers can tend to squeeze out of the launcher. Um, in particular, I cite uh, Open Launcher, which is currently, uh, as you may well know, another launcher that's available for Google TV that really brings some features, an uh, easier layout. Um, I'll just give you, I'll cite an example for Open Launcher is uh, my wife is, she uses Android a lot, uh, Android tablets, she uses her Android tablets, 10 inch tablets, her favorite thing. Um, for her, Open Launcher was a little bit easier to grasp. It reminded her more of the, the Android experience she was already used to. So seeing some more of that kind of thing brought to Google TV, because I, the creative level that they've taken, the launchers on the small screen is, is really nice. Um, I think some of that could be replicated on the big screen. I just, mostly, I think they haven't even considered it. So uh, that's where I'm trying to start it. I'm trying to get more of them to consider Google TV development. I mean, at, I'd like to see them consider it um, a lucrative thing as well. I mean, there's, there are legions of Google TV fans that are just waiting for some of these apps to be made available on the big screen, and we'll buy them. And that's kind of the point that I'm getting at. So, I mean, just to get them to even consider Google TV development as an option, um, as an option for um, even more revenue. Um, is, is more of what I'm trying to get out there. And I think that's what they do. I think a lot of developers don't even really give Google to be a thought as they uh, produce apps for the tablet and uh, smartphone formats. So what I've tried to do with, with my kind of advocate advocacy for Google TV is kind of share my user experience. Um, I have like a, about maybe 3,700 followers on Google+. Plus. Um, and I try to let them know how Google TV makes it uh, makes my day a little bit brighter sometimes. It's just a very, 
it's a remarkable platform how it's developed. I would like to see it go a lot further, but I think what's missing is that people don't really understand. A lot of people haven't even be, even touched smart TVs yet. So to get them to understand that Google TV is how much it's like Android and how many things you can do with it. Um, in the article, uh, I cited an example of my brother who already owns a Sony Google TV, but he purchased a Roku box, um, mostly because, uh, you know, he thought he would get some more hackability out of it. And he came to the conclusion that, you know, his Google TV was a lot more versatile than he thought. Um, so that's kind of where I think is lacking is basically letting the, the Android user, because there are a lot of us out there who use Android, and we love it, and we swear by Android, um, to get that same kind of energy behind Google TV by showing people that, hey, it's not that much different than your tablet or smartphone. Um, it's kind of where I think we're, we're, we're missing at. So uh, just kind of pushing the format, letting people know it is Android um, at its core. And uh, it works basically the same. Um, and some of the versatility you can get out of it. Um, it's interesting that you bring up the SDK because in my, uh, well, in, in a more, another article that I wrote recently on Google TV Friends, specifically about Google TV development, uh, the, the focus of the article is on some of the changes you have made to the SDK to kind of advance it and make it more accessible for those other platforms, Apple and Linux specifically. Um, so it's interesting that you bring that up. Uh, that's, I don't know, I think I had heard that it was, it kind of was a hurdle when they were trying to, I don't know, something with video playback or something like that, that a lot of developers were looking for the, the emulator to be more functional for that, but I'm not sure because I'm not really uh, well versed in the intricacies of what some of the problems people were having with the emulator were. But getting the word out there that, like you said, it's just as approachable as, as developing an app for any for Android on any size or scale um, is important. And I think that's lacking as well. And I see that as a hurdle um, the, for Google TV to overcome. Um, other than that, I, I've also, you know, there's some feedback, different devices too. Um, I think Google TV is, when Android first began, it had that same hurdle to, to leap. Um, which is kind of the fragmentation between devices and different devices deliver different levels of performance. Um, so you may have been an early adopter who had a bad experience. Um, and now that Google TV has come a long way, you're not really aware of the progress that has been made. So you have kind of have a bad taste in your mouth. And kind of trying to get people to overcome that is something that I think needs to be done. Because Google TV is a lot different now. It's a lot better. It's a lot faster and more usable now than when I first bought a Google TV. Which so one was I, your first one? Um, actually, I'm using the same one that I initially bought. But the, the Honeycomb update is where I saw a turnaround and where I wanted. It started to look more like I wanted it to look. It started becoming a platform that was easier for me to use on a daily basis. Also, the extension of my other Android devices. This is important. Um, this is something I think is lacking. Uh, my Nexus 7 actually makes my Google TV far more usable um, than the, for example, the remote control that came stock with my TV. Uh, let me see if I can show you. This deal mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Not very user friendly, but um, Google TV remote or Able remote, uh, a third party app. I mean, those two, my, like I said, my family members primarily use those now to control the TV. I mean, it's just a lot easier to do. Um, and I, I think that we, we should showcase that a little more. And, I, and I, that's one thing I want to do at Roots Wiki. Yeah, people, some, in my case, I have several TVs. The Google TV is kind of my device. It's, it's kind of an extension of my Android collection until it's time for Netflix or something like that. So for me, I'm more of a, I guess I'm more of a hardcore Google TV user. Um, I use things like Evernote, Dropbox, side load apps, and things of that nature. Um, so, oh, but th this point you were making about second screen apps, and this is that's kind of another big deal that I kind of have been speaking out a lot about um, because I like kind of what I've seen in the early iterations of what second screen apps are looking like on Google TV. 
Um, I mentioned when you asked me what apps I like to use, I mentioned Control TV, uh, which has a trivia a trivia game and a poker game that use the uh, your Android device that your poker hand is displayed on your Android device. Everybody has a key, um, just for people out there that aren't familiar with it. And everybody enters a key, and then their, their Android device interfaces with the television. Essentially, the television is the dealer. Um, now, see, that's an experience that I would like to see more of. It's a really, really great use of the second screen apps, and it's a great use of Google TV um, as a gaming platform, uh, kind of a group experience. Um, and I really, really, really enjoy that. Uh, Let's Draw is another one. Um, that kind of uses the tablet or smartphone as a second screen or controller. Um, Sony has an app that they make that they also put out that's basically just called Smart TV Remote. That has an on-screen controller on it that can be used uh, across other Google TV apps as well. Um, so more things of that nature uh, that make input and control a little bit easier. Um, and also augment uh, our television watching experience. Like, I'm surprised that I haven't seen Get Glue. Um, this is an app that I've, a social network that I've been a part of for a long time. Uh, Get Glue is basically just about earning achievements, and they hand out these stickers for checking in to programs or books that you're reading or games that you're playing. Um, to see, that's an, that's an opportunity that I think that a lot of the established brands are missing, because Get Glue could be right in there. I could share what I'm watching from my TV screen. I could, ha I could have that conversation that I'm having on Get Glue on my Nexus 7 with the person on my TV instead of having to you know, uh, use a second Android device. And I just think that some of the opportunities for Google TV haven't caught on yet, um, and I'd like to see more of it. Yeah, that, I think we basically got the, the grasp of what we're trying to do over at Roots Wiki. Um, what we're, we're working on right now, just for as far as the future, as far as Roots Wiki is concerned, uh, is a, a Google TV form, a dedicated Google TV form is in the works. So I'm not sure where we are along the process of getting that done, but uh, we'll be sharing that and, and letting people know about that as soon as we get it up. And we would like to have some feedback from you guys or any other developers out there. Because um, that's kind of what, Roots Wiki is kind of what's a developer community. So it's already going on on Roots Wiki. So we hope to be able to gen up some excitement through that kind of thing. Um, on there. So that's, that's, and of course I'll be writing more articles about Google TV in the near future. Hello everyone. In this episode, we are going to talk about Google Play and how you get your applications for Google TV into the Google Play Store. So let's take a look. There is a lot of documentation how to publish Android applications. So keep in mind, Google TV, it's an Android device. So all of the Android guidelines apply just as well as for all the mobile and tablet devices. So take a look online on developer.android.com. There is a lot of good information about how to publish your application. So first, of course, you have to test your app. You, we assume you have developed it and tested it for this uh, episode here. And uh, we will talk a little bit about some of the things that are unique to Google TV. I'll get to that in a while. So one of the differences of Google TV and a lot of the other standard Android devices is some of the compatibility features that it supports. Naturally, a television is a very different device from a mobile phone. The biggest difference, of course, is it does not have a touch screen. I'll show you that in a little bit. If you choose to have multiple APKs for the same application, think about how this impacts your strategy in terms of pricing. Is your mobile app going to be the same price as your TV app, or maybe there's different features? So that's another thing to keep in mind. Lastly, make sure you have promotional graphics that, of course, reflect your TV app and make sure your APK is ready for release. So let's look at what it takes to get your APK ready to be released on Play Store. Again, follow the Android documentation. There is a really great checklist um, that walks you through all of the steps. Probably one of the 
first things you want to do if you have not already published Android applications in the Play Store is you want to create a cryptographic key which allows you to sign your application. Make sure you have a key that you can keep for a long time. Um, the key must be valid until at least 2033 and make sure you keep that key safe. You will need that key every time you update your application in the future. Okay, let's look at how the Play Store chooses which applications are available on Google TV. So the filtering is strictly based on Android features. So as I've mentioned earlier, the big difference between a mobile device and a Google TV is that Google TV is not a touchscreen device. So make sure when you declare your manifest file, you add the uses feature Android hardware touchscreen and make it required equals false. By the way, this will not filter out your application from regular normal mobile devices with a touchscreen. It will only allow it to also run on non-touchscreen devices. If you want to run on only Google TV, then you can specify a, a separate um, feature, which is the com.google.android.tv feature. Also make sure you have the right min SDK and max SDK version set. We recommend a target SDK of 12 or 13. Google TV currently, the version that's most in the market, is API version 13. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, what it takes to get your application tested on Google TV. So first you need to connect ADB to your Google TV device. On a regular Android mobile device, you would just plug in your USB cable. On Google TV, we use IP addresses. So you type ADB, connect, and the IP address of your device. As you can see, once you've done this, ADB recognizes your Google TV as just another Android device and you can use all the regular ADB commands. Things like ADB shell, ADB lock cat, ADB install, all the ADB commands uh, you know and love from your Android development. Um, one other thing, when you use uh, ADB logcat, uh, take a look at the logs of your application. Before you publish your application, you want to make sure you uh, clean up a lot of the log and debugging messages that may be in your app. So after you have connected ADB, you can see in the Eclipse IDE, you can actually access your um, ADB logcat from within the IDE. And you can also do things like run or debug directly on your Google TV device from Eclipse. Let's take a quick look at that. So just for an example, I've set a breakpoint here. And let's go and debug this application with this breakpoint. As you see in the console, it is uh, connecting to the device, waiting for the debugger. And now things are starting up here. And when we change to the debug perspective, you can see we see the Dalvik virtual machine and we see threads running. And after a while, your application has started up and it has hit the breakpoint. Now, what you can do is you can just single step through it. You can watch your variables. It's a great tool to verify your application. You can also check things like CPU load or memory or my favorite, take a screenshot. This screenshot comes in very handy later on when you upload your application to the Android Play Store. You should actually use the screenshots from Google TV. Make sure you scale them to uh, 1280 by 720 pixels uh, so you get great, good-looking screenshots on Play Store for Google TV. Now let's take a look at the manifest file. The manifest file is really the one place where a lot of the features are kept uh, that influence how your application is filtered on the Play Store. So before you upload, make sure your version code is up to date. You have to increment your version code when you upload a new version to the Google Play Store. The version name is the human readable form. You can enter a string or a more explanatory version number. The key feature is really Android hardware touchscreen. If you are developing for Google TV, make sure 
to set the touch screen as required equals false. The other feature is the com.google.android.tv. You can set that to true or false depending if you want your application to be exclusive for Google TV. Take a look at the support screen. Make sure you support at least normal and large screens for your application. Normal is for 720p, large screens is for 1080p. So when we look at the manifest XML, it's always a good idea to double check the XML. Make sure everything is the way you like it. By the way, here you see the target SDK version I've set to 13 and the minimum to 12, which should cover all of the Google TV devices. And here we see the features for touchscreen and Android TV. So one other property I want to point out is the Android package name. Make sure it is a meaningful and unique package name for your application. Uh, we recommend that you start with something like your domain name or your company name. And keep in mind this package name is unique to your application and it will stay with your application for its entire life in the Google Play Store. One other thing is um, make sure you turn off debugging mode. Uh, you want to turn this off and on a real application when you release it to market, you may also want to uh, obfuscate it using tools like for example ProGuard. During the development process, your application gets typically signed with a debug key. Now when you get ready to publish in the Play Store, you want to sign it with an actual release key. So how can you do that? In Eclipse, you click on the project and then you look at the Android tools and use export signed application package. This will create a file that is ready to be uploaded to the Google Play Store. So choose the correct project and then go and choose a key store that you want to use to actually sign this application. Please make sure you keep a copy and a backup of this key store for future use. You will need the same key store every time you update your application in the Google Play Store. So it's very important to keep this backed up. Now choose the proper key, enter the password again and this will create the signed package for the upload to the Google Play Store. You want to double check the certificate is valid until at least 2033 and uh, make sure all the information is correct in the certificate. Okay, now that we have exported the APK, let's take a look and verify if all the settings are indeed correct. The tool to use for this is called AAPT. It's the Android application packaging tool. And you can use the parameters dump badging and your APK name. This will show you all of the features and permissions and all of the meta information in a very simple user readable form. Uh, take a look at the version code, the target SDK, and especially double check that the Android hardware touch screen is listed as not required. Also, take a look at the icons that you package with your application. You want to make sure you have at least uh, the 240 and the 320 DPI resolution icons to make sure it looks really brilliant and sharp on a large television screen. The other thing to verify is uh, you can use the tool JAR Signer and you can verify the certificates that have been used to sign your application with. It's just a good idea to make sure everything looks good. In this case, we see that the certificate used, it uses my name, it uses my organization. Um, things look pretty good and the expiration date is in the future. It's uh, in this case is 2036. Once you're ready to upload to Google Play, go to the play.google.com slash apps slash publish developer console. In the developer console, you'll see a list of applications which you own or which you have uploaded in the past. 
and you can t uh, you can take a look at the store listing it will show you things like the title the description the uh, featured image and so on and so forth it's a good idea to update some of the information some of the description update maybe the release notes and update the recent changes so your users know what is new in this update now let's look at the apks when you click on apks i suggest choosing the advanced mode this gives you a little bit more features and a little bit more flexibility and you can upload a new apk and you can simply browse select the file we just created upload it and the Google Play Store gives you a high-level overview of what are the features of your application, uh, what are some of the required permissions, and it also gives you a list of devices that are available for your application. So just uh, give it a look, make sure it looks good to you, and then save the file. The file is not active, so it's not yet being pushed out to developers. So you have a chance to double check. Um, you also can upload this in advance. You can stage it. And then at a given time, whenever you're ready, you can publish the application to your users. So now I can either reset my draft, re-upload a new version, or if I'm happy with the version I uploaded, I can publish this version with one click. Now the application is being published and is available through Google Play to Google TV devices. Please be patient. The updating of all the backend servers, it may take a couple minutes to a couple hours. So it may take a few minutes for your changes to actually appear. Another feature I want to highlight is the statistics. So as an application developer, you're always interested who is using your app, how many people are using your app, which versions, which countries, which devices. So our statistics uh, page gives you a very good overview of a breakdown of your customers. Great, now your app is uploaded to the Play Store. The last and final check is you can go to play.google.com and you can check out your listing in the Play Store. As I said earlier, give it a few minutes. If your listing does not update immediately, it can take a little while. It can take up to one or two hours. So take a look, check it out, um, verify especially the quality of your screenshots and the quality of your graphics. And uh, lastly, let us know about it. Uh, Google TV is a great platform to develop for and we're always excited for new applications and we're always looking forward to hear from you guys what new apps you have come up with that run on Google TV. So let us know on our plus page and I hope you guys have a great week and uh, looking forward to seeing all those new applications. Thanks a lot and see you next time.